welcome to New Discourse's Bullets. I'm James Lindsay. In this podcast, I give a short bullet point summary of some topic relevant to woke Marxism that you need to know. Today is completely different. We are going to do a homily to young men. I want to speak to young men, so if you're not a young man, go away. This is for you guys, uh, or not for you guys. Everybody else needs to go away. No, I'm just kidding. You can listen too. This is good advice really for everybody, but I want to speak specifically to young men, um, whether you're, what do I mean by young men? If you're over 12 and you're male and you're probably under 30, but definitely under 25, you're the target audience here. Um, first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to realize there's a meme out on the internet, a few of them, a lot of them actually. There's a meme, for example, that shows a uh, woman looking over at a man laying in bed and he looks like he's staring off into space and she says i bet he's thinking about other women and it has a, a you know a thought bubble above his head there he's thinking about fighting how he would he would fight a, a grizzly bear if the moment came or something like this or there's another meme where it actually says something to the effect of you know it shows an animal encounter and 80 percent of men have thought through how they would kill a wild animal in the situation. And this is truly something I want to encourage you with at the beginning. I want you to imagine, I want you to spend time visualizing what you would do if you had to fight an animal. And why would you do that? Just to go fight it? No, of course not. Because you have to protect, right? It's dangerous. You have to protect yourself, maybe. You have to protect your family. You have to protect your house. There's these stories of like, black leopards, like jumping in through the window and, you know, not in the United States, but in other countries and surprising families in their beds and dad has to fight them off. And sometimes does. It's very dangerous. The Dallas zoo just had just last week from when I'm recording this, how a clouded leopard get out of its enclosure. So imagine you're at the zoo. Nobody was, I think at the time, I think it was overnight, but imagine you're at the zoo and you just found out that a clouded leopard got loose. And in fact, there it is. What are you going to do? How are you going to protect your sisters? How are you going to protect your kid brother? How are you going to protect your mom? How are you going to help make sure your family gets together and is protected? How are you going to protect other kids? How are you going to protect other people around you? So you're a 14 year old boy. What are you going to do? How are you going to fight a clouded leopard? I don't know how dangerous clouded lepers are, but I imagine they're a dangerous cat. They're not the biggest cat, but what are you going to do? You should think through stuff like that. Because it's actually a healthy masculine thing to do. It sounds ridiculous. But you, as a young man or an adolescent growing into one, have a role to fulfill in your life, which is a role as a strong protector. You need, therefore, to think about issues like this. You need to think about how you can apply strength under control, how you can be ready at need. What do you have to do to be able to prepare for such an event? How are you going to physically prepare yourself? It's not just thinking it through. How are you going to physically prepare yourself? How are you going to mentally prepare yourself to be ready at need to exhibit strength under control so that you can protect the vulnerable, especially those closest to you, your mom, your sister, your kid brother, the other kids, a bunch of kindergarten class maybe is at the zoo that day. What are you going to do? Are you going to leave it to the girls? Are you going to cry for mom? Nah, nah. You are a young man and you need to be prepared to figure out how to step into the role as a strong protector. Feminists have called this crap toxic masculinity or say that it exhibits signs of toxic masculinity. This is nonsense. This is horrible nonsense. It's not true. They're they're disenfranchising you from who you are when they tell you this. They are forcing you to not realize that you have this role that is sacred to you, who you are as a man or an emerging adult or an adolescent who will grow into a man. In other words, what you need to do is you need to learn to master and channel aggression and strength. When Jordan Peterson tells you that you, you must be dangerous in order to be anything, you have to be able to be dangerous, but you also have to be able to control it. That he's right. That's absolutely key. So you, you, you must figure out how to do this. You need to think through these things. You need to think, holy crap, a clouded leopard would probably eat my lunch. Maybe I should do some push-ups. Maybe I should start trying to use my body. Maybe I should develop some coordination. Maybe I should not just think through these things, but put this into action and start transforming the physical body I'm in so that I can be a strong protector. And maybe I need to make sure that I channel my strength and my aggression as it develops so that it's useful to serve others, not to become its own toxic danger that the feminists exaggerate and pin on you unfairly. You need to learn to develop, master, and channel your aggression and strength. 
That means you can't be passive aggressive. You can't complain all the time. You can't, if you're over 12 years old, you can't be crying out for mom all the time. You need to be helping mom. You've got it backwards. If you're under 12, you're a kid. Okay, fine. If you're over 12, it's time to put some kids things away and start being a little bit more of an adult. Start to start, uh, try to develop into that. Um, to, how can you do that? Well, you need to do some hard things. You need to go do things that are uncomfortable. I said push-ups. Find some activity that's challenging, that's difficult, that's physically demanding on you. Go out and help dad work in the yard or whatever. Go out and work in the yard yourself. Uh, go out and do work until you're tired. Like Make your body do uncomfortable but productive things. In fact, what I would say is you need to do uncomfortable things that seek, if I can use a kind of a specialist term, that seek development. How are you developing yourself? into the man that you're going to be. You need to be constantly thinking, and I mean it, constantly thinking about how you can develop yourself if you're a young man. The harder the stuff you undertake in the, in the pursuit of development, whether it's you decide you're going to run, whether it decide you're going to, you know, get very good at a sport, whether you're going to practice a martial art, whether you're going to go out and do actual work, yard work, lawn work, whatever, all of those to exhaustion, all of those things will make other things seem easier later. This builds character and it builds strength and it's absolutely necessary for a young man. But in counterbalance to that, to that growth and development, which can give you a bit of a head on your shoulders, you need to remember and cultivate humility and gratitude. You need to serve. You need to develop yourself so that you can be of service to those around you. That's what strong masculinity looks like. That's what you need to be growing into. And since we're just going to be frank and I'm talking to young men, you need to serve and not simp. You need to serve from strength, not out of need or duplicity. Simping is when you are being a simpering fool and trying to impress a girl or whatever, and you're sucking up to her. What you're telling her is, I'm below you. I'm not worthy of you. And while you might feel that because you have, you know, haven't grown into your confidence yet, or you might feel that because you think she's so amazing, it's not healthy. It's not good. She isn't going to respect it in the long run. It's the best case scenario. Maybe you get a, you, you get a, a little bit out of it and then you get walked all over. You need to learn to serve and lead. And you need to do so when you're serving and leading. You're doing so from humility. You're doing so with gratitude for the opportunity to be able to express who you are and put this out in the world. Now, a lot of you know I'm not religious, but I'm going to actually turn to the Bible for a second. Um, I think it's the Gospel of Matthew. I'm not that well-versed, honestly. But I'm, I want to read to you something that struck me when I was about 18 years old. Somebody read it to me out of the Bible when I was 18 years old, and it was incredibly important to me. It's the parable of the talents. If you haven't heard of the parable of the talents, you should. You should read it. And so, because you probably won't read things, I will read it to you. It's not that long. It is, uh, according to what my internet tells me, it is Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. It gets a little dark at the end, and this is a new international version. If you care about these things, it's the parable of the bags of gold or the parable of the talents. That's what the talents are, the bags of gold. Okay. Again, it says, and this is quoting somebody speaking, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. And I think the person speaking is Jesus, by the way. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. So do you hear the setup here? This is Jesus is giving a parable about how to develop and grow. So you have three guys. One is pretty worthy already, so he gets five bags of gold invested in him. Another guy is less worthy, so he gets two bags of gold invested in him. Another guy is even less worthy, and he gets one bag of gold invested in him. He's having investment given to him by a wealthy uh, a wealthy master calls in his servants. These are servants. They're not random guys. And they're given an amount according to their ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who re had received the five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things that will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And let me pause to say, 
What's happened here, first of all, is the guy took his five bags of gold, invested it, did something productive with it, and came back and had 10 bags of gold. He doubled his money, okay? And then he showed his master what he did. His master's happy with him. And the phrase that stuck in my head when I was 18 out of this was, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things that will put you in charge of many things. That's the mentality you need. You have talents. You have abilities. You have gifts. You have resources. You have a body, you have whatever your family has already provided for you. You have your wits, you have your mind, you have a few things wherever you are. You need to be faithful with a few things because then if you're a good and faithful servant of a few things, you can be put in charge of many things. In other words, you can grow, you can double your, your value. And then when you have 10 bags of gold, you would have been worth according to your ability, 10 bags of gold. Okay, so you could have doubled that to 20 and you can see how the growth process works. Can, continuing, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold and see, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things that will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So it didn't matter that he only made two more bags of gold where the other guy made five. His master wasn't pissed. His master was like, your ability was to deal with two. You dealt with two. You doubled your money. You did good. All right, rock on. Let's give you more responsibility. So now he's going to start with four if he does it again. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where you start. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came, Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you don't use your talents, that's what you deserve, guys. Young men, if you don't put your talents to, to, to work, to serve, to grow, to develop what's around you, that's what you deserve, to have your crap taken from you and thrown out. That's the lesson here on this side of it, on top of the very positive lesson that you can actually take what you have, what, whatever, wherever you are, and grow with it. Okay, Build around you, start where you are and build. A lot of people your age, I've talked to a lot of people your age, get hung up. I got hung up on this idea of having this grand vision for your life. Oh, I have to become of this. I have to have that. Everything has to work toward this grand vision. Bull crap. That doesn't work. It's fake. You will picture the glory that you think you might be able to achieve and you will languish in that image and never achieve it. You don't need a grand vision. Okay. You've been sold this line. It's not true. I'm sorry. It's not true. Every moment of my life that I chased a grand vision, I sucked. Every time I did what I'm about to tell you, I took my eyes off the stars and put them on the ground around me and figured out what I can do in this moment around me that's productive, useful, and of service. I grew. You don't need to think about how you're going to become the biggest this or the biggest that or the biggest star or whatever. You need to look around you and say, what needs to be done and how can I do it? You need to stay humble feet on the ground, eyes off the stars, and serve. As your talents grow, if we follow the parable, then you can start looking out over the horizon. You're not ready to look over the horizon yet. You haven't looked three feet from you yet. You have to start there. Be humble. Serve around you. As you gain in prowess, as you gain development, look out further. Figure out how to serve in bigger ways. And the growth will come. The growth will happen. If you don't know what to do, look around you start. Just start and start close by and start looking to see what comes up. Take advantage when opportunities arise. Take smart risks, but start close by. What's close by? You, your body, your health, your mind, your education, your parents, your family, your close friends, your community, maybe things in your school. Always seek to understand what you've been given and how you can serve with it and then serve for growth. Start local, get bigger as you grow. Take responsibility and make productive use of what you've been given, whether it's a little or a lot. 
If it doesn't matter if it's a little or a lot. We all know in the parable, had the guy with one bag of gold come back and said, Master, I did what I could with your one bag of gold and I have two, or I have one and a half now. He would have said, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. Let me make you master over many. Same message. Take what you have. I don't care how little it is and figure out how to turn it into development, how to turn it into useful service around you. You must learn and start. If you are over 12 years old, I'm not kidding, to take responsibility. Start making productive use of what you have, which starts with figuring out what you have and being grateful for it, and then figuring out what you can do with it to serve what's around you. And as you get more and bigger, you'll have more and bigger things that are around you that you can reach, that you can impact. So where does it start? If you're over 12, you need to start asking yourself, besides whether or not you can fight a clouded leopard at the zoo. Are you eating well? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you exercising? Are you trying to develop your body, your skills, your coordination? Are you taking care of your health? Are you taking care of you, you, grooming yourself? And I'm not, we all know about that word, but I mean like taking showers, cleaning up, making sure that you're dressing reasonably well. Are you doing this? Or are you being a slob? Are you cleaning up around you? Are you cleaning your room? Are you cleaning your house? Are you helping keep your yard and, and, and your home in order? Help your parents do it. Are you helping take care of issues that come up? Are you helping your mother and father with those things? How can you be, you should be asking yourself every day, how can I be a help and a support to my mother? Your mother has raised you if you're over 12 years old. Boyhood is over. You are an emerging man, an adolescent man, or a young man. It's time to figure out how can you help and support your mother. How can you be an assistant to your father? If you don't have a father, how can you help with a coach? How can you find a male role model and be an assistant to them and also an apprentice to them? How can you be a protector and role model to your sisters and your younger brothers and just to the family around you and to other kids who might be in your, in your circles? How can you form fraternity with your brothers? Do you know what the word fraternity means? It's not a place where you go get drunk in college. Fraternity means the bond between brothers. How are you building fraternity with your brothers? How are you gaining familial solidarity, family solidarity, and especially with your brothers? How are you, again, protecting and leading and guiding your sisters, especially your younger sisters, but also your older sisters? How are you choosing your friends? Are you choosing your friends in alignment with the idea of service and development, or are you choosing your friends for fun in the moment? Are you choosing your friends in alignment with values you want to cultivate because they are meaningful to what it means to be a healthy man, or are you just trying to figure out how to get rich, have fun, and tell bad jokes? You really want to do more of the first one and a lot less of the second one. You should tell good jokes. We'll come back to that. Do not wait for other people around you to behave the way you need to behave. Do not think that somebody else has to do something in order for you to start developing yourself. You need to practice leadership. You need to practice it in whatever small ways at first and look for good and real opportunities for those to multiply. That's a lesson out of the parable of the talents. And if you're not doing that, if all you're doing is squandering your time playing video games, never doing any development of yourself, squandering your time screwing around on the internet, squandering around being a dickhead, I was a teenage boy. I know what it's about. You're just wasting your time being a dickhead. You're the guy with the one bag who doesn't deserve anything except to have it taken away from him and have him thrown out. You've got to develop. Put away the video games. Or if you want to play them, fine, I get it. Keep them in context. But just remember, every minute that you're developing on a video game, you're developing a fake character in a digital world that doesn't exist. You're not developing you. It's not to say you can't learn things or have fun or unwind. Great if you do, but they need to be in context. Don't let the video game master you. Let you master your use of the video game. Let it be entertainment, but your life's not entertainment. You've got responsibilities now. You're a young man. If you're older, this isn't for the 13-year-olds. If you're older and you're ch chasing chicks, you're wanting to play the hookup game or whatever because it's there, it's available. Tinder, oh my God. Know what you're getting into. That's short-term fun. It's a dissatisfying game. Let me tell you as an older guy, it's a dissatisfying game in the long run. It will leave you miserable in the long run. Older men very consistently are far lonelier than anybody else. And if you piss away your opportunity for investment into a real, real relationship, you're pissing it away. It's good for some things. It is fun. It's good for answering some questions and doubts. I'm not going to lie to you about that. It's good for getting rid of some what ifs. It's good for realizing that the grass on the other side of the fence typically isn't any greener than the grass that you're investing in. And in fact, when you invest in grass, it gets even greener. In other words, if you water and fertilize your lawn, it grows greener than any other. I mean, it's very simple. But 
it is, a, there is this what if, what if I picked the wrong girl? It's scary to commit, you know? So you, if you have a phase of shopping around, know you're playing a dissatisfying game, know that it's short lived and know that you're doing it in order to develop because you do. Let me tell you, I'm almost 20 years into marriage. You do want a good nourished marriage. There is nothing more valuable, especially as you get older as a man. This woman is your platform. This woman is your rock. This woman is the place where you can set it all down and you don't get that for free. You have to build it. You have to earn her trust. You have to earn her support. She's not just going to give it to you and she shouldn't. That's disgusting. But you can't be afraid to commit to the right girl. Shop around, date around, I guess, play around responsibly and carefully, thoughtfully. But when you find the right one, stop thinking that that chick on the fucking internet is better for you because she's not and she doesn't even know who you are and she isn't going to care who you are. You need to choose a good girl. You need to be very grateful that you found one that'll put up with you. And then you need to develop your strength and serve her. Choose well. Meet in person if possible. Stop meeting online if you can. Whenever possible, meet in person. Develop in person. You should talk to the person face to face before you ever text them. You shouldn't see them on an app first. Except in rare cases. Do not simp and suck up to these girls, guys. You aren't elevating yourself. You're not getting what you want. You're turning yourself into a beta orbiter, and you shouldn't do it. The only fans, girls, that you think you're chasing, you're giving money to, aren't your girlfriends. Yeah, okay, it's fun. Yeah, whatever, I get it. Girl's using you, dude. Girl is using you. You're not serving. You are simping. Simping is bad. I'm not going to accuse the girl. You're a man. You need to be a leader. That's on her. Lead your life. Don't wait for some woman to stop tempting you into oblivion. You need to lead yourself and find somebody that you can lead uh, through life. And if it leads some of these people out of it because the circumstances change and that's not the gold mine it used to be, or it's just filled with toxicity and weak men who have no backbone, have no leadership or whatever, don't let that be your problem. You be something worth not having to pay to have a pretend girlfriend online who's pretending to be your girlfriend for the so-called girlfriend experience so you'll give her bigger tips. She doesn't care about you, dude. She doesn't care about you. And you need to be the one that's man enough to step up and say, you know what, I'm not doing that. The overall message here is simple, though. You need to cultivate responsibility, leadership, and controlled and channeled strength. You do that by developing yourself. You need to invest in your life and its future. You need to do hard things. You need to invest in your family and community. What's around you as you start to date and you start to find the right girl and you take the risk of committing to the right girl, you need to start investing in your future spouse. You, ne you need to invest in that person. You want to think of your long-term relationship future spouse in a very similar way as you would to a long-term investment account or a mortgage, which I know it's hard to contemplate, but it's easier to think of a bank account that you want to grow, an investment portfolio that you want to grow. You can't freak out over the dips. You got to weather the bad times and invest more when you can. You have to nourish growth and always serve that relationship, but don't do it in a way where you're compromising yourself and simping. It must be done from a position of developed strength. And last, like I said, we'll come back to the jokes. You need to learn to be funny. It is very masculine to be funny. It is also dangerous and toxic to be funny in the wrong way. There's a big difference between teasing and joking around on the one hand and mocking on the other. And you're going to do both. And they have different places. And they're both masculine traits as long as you don't get too passive aggressive and bitchy. But you need to tease and joke from, from love and practice this. But you can't let the love get lost. Mockery is different. That's what you target your enemies with. Hopefully you will find some enemies who are enemies of the things that are good in life, things that are proper and right, and you will mock them. We should be mocking this woke crap. We should be mocking it viciously. It's evil. And mocking it is great. And you can make some pretty savage memes, or you can make some pretty savage jokes, or whatever you want to do, and you can make fun of it with your friends, and you can bond that way. But you need to tease and joke. You need to practice these things. You need to learn to be funny. And you have to understand that funny is a skill. You have to practice it. 
A lot of your jokes are going to fall flat. A lot of them are going to be awkward. Some of them are going to be mean and they're going to hurt people until you learn the subtle nuances of humor and you can pull these things off and practice them. And you need to be ready to suck it up and own it when you screw up and you say something mean or you mock when you should have teased or you tease too far. This is why you want to develop fraternity with your brothers, by the way. You can be doing this. And with your closest friends, you can be doing this with each other. You can be navigating when it's right and wrong to make the certain kinds of jokes. You need to, This is a skill like playing football, like playing baseball, like learning martial arts, like learning mathematics, like learning to read, to learning to write, learning to do anything, learning to be an electrician or a mechanic. It is a skill like anything. You have to practice if you want to be funny, and it is very masculine to be very funny in an appropriate way that's not disparaging and mocking except where it's due and is teasing and friendly and conveys and communicates love. A lot of boys show love to each other by teasing each other. Figure out what that looks like and get good at it. And when you screw up, not only do you need to own it, you need to laugh at yourself. When your joke sucks, you need to laugh at yourself. You need to practice it humble laughing at yourself. It's really important. Practice healthy laughter at yourself and with others. And it's not so healthy to laugh at others. So cultivate on top of responsibility, leadership, and controlled and channeled strength that's appropriate so that you can kill the clouded leopard or hold it down while the zookeepers come or whatever and protect the class of kindergartners and your kid's sister. You need to cultivate leadership and strength, but also humor and good humor and responsibility, but don't delay. Don't put it off. Start developing now. If you are over 12, like I said, you have a responsibility. You have to start taking responsibility. It is time for you to start growing into your responsibility. So take what you have, figure out how to use it to serve humbly and gratefully. Start with your family, start with your, 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 your home, where you live, your neighborhood, and your school and develop. That's number one. And as you know, it says, if you do this well, if you do this right, um, you'll be fortunate enough to hear, or at least hear for yourself. Like I learned to hear for myself when I did this, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So there's some uh, advice for young men. I hope you find it helpful. I know this one's long for a bullet. They're supposed to be 10 minutes or whatever, but I didn't want to do a full podcast. I hope this resonated with you. Um, I think it's very important. Young men need to lead us into a positive and bright future. Don't radicalize. Don't get desperate. Don't be a freak. Cultivate confidence, strength, leadership, And it happens by taking responsibility in good humor.